12 Behaviors That Destroy Relationships Adults looking to be in healthy, fulfilling relationships should know how to act. They should never be old enough, chronologically speaking, to date and still act like a child. Unfortunately, there are many in relationships, married ones included, who don't know how to act their age. When it comes to dating, no one wants to parent their significant other. A healthy relationship includes two mature adults who communicate properly and put the other's needs above their own. These are 12 bad habits, ruining relationships, that need to stop immediately. Number 12. Pouting. Have you ever seen a grown person pout? I'm talking about the bottom lip poking out, head bowed, and arms crossed. If you have, you might agree with me when I say it's one of the most unattractive sights to be seen. Pouting is a surefire way to break down lines of communication and close yourself off to the ability to problem solve like an adult. You create an atmosphere of unhappiness within your relationship. Instead of pouting, learn ways to properly express your feelings of displeasure, anger, and frustration that don't involve dramatic displays of emotion. Number 11. Too much complaining. There's nothing more annoying than somebody who complains. Complaining puts a wedge between you and your partner and can ultimately end in a breakup or divorce. Complaining is not an effective strategy for getting what you want. When you complain, it can make it difficult for your partner to understand what you're upset about. There may be an underlying reason why you're. Number 10. You don't communicate. Communication is the key to a healthy relationship. We've all heard this one before. But how many of us make it a priority to truly connect with our partner? In this day and age of digital devices, it's just so easy to get lost in that and real-life relationships take a backseat. Next time you go out look around at how many couples or groups of friends are sitting together and all just looking at their phones. It's easy to get lost in the shuffle and the grind of everyday life, but you have to make it a priority to talk to each other. Communication plays an even more vital role when conflicts arise, which they inevitably will even in the best relationships. Healthy communication can be challenging if you grew up in a home with unhealthy communication. You may find that you get overly defensive. You stonewall or shut down. You ice him out or maybe you get extremely combative. All of these are unhealthy coping mechanisms being activated by a triggering situation, and a simple argument can be highly triggering for certain people. Number 9. Lack of Empathy This is a tough one because it's very easy to get caught up in our own experience of the relationship. It's easy to feel like we're the victim, and it's unfair, and we're right, and he's wrong, and we're doing everything in this relationship, and getting nothing back. I know it can feel that way in the heat of the moment, but it's important to step back and look at your partner with more empathetic eyes. I'm not saying your hurt isn't valid, but it won't get you anywhere to blame them fully. He'll just get defensive, and the conversation won't go anywhere. And your partner should also activate his empathy and try to see things from your perspective. When you can't see his perspective, then he doesn't feel heard. And this will cause a breakdown in communication, which will create distance between you. And the more distance there is, the less intimacy there is. Number 8 too much criticism. Why do we do this? We hate being criticized, but sometimes just can't help but do it to our partners. It doesn't motivate him to change and instead makes him resentful and annoyed and even less likely to do what you want. It also creates a parent-child dynamic where you're his mother scolding him, and there is nothing less sexy than that. If you are overly critical, then look deeper into where that comes from. Usually, the thing we're most critical about in others is what we are most critical about in ourselves. Number 7. Being deceptive. There is never a good reason to be sneaky in your relationship. If you feel this need, ask yourself why. Do you think your partner will get angry? Are you trying to present yourself in a certain light and you're afraid your real self won't be good enough? Trust is everything. If you can't trust him and he can't trust you, what are we even doing here? Number 6. No respect. Dr. John Gottman, the guy famous for being able to predict whether a couple will divorce with 90% accuracy, cites contempt as one of the leading factors of whether a relationship will fall apart, and of the greatest indicators of that in his research is eye-rolling. Contempt conveys, I'm better than you, I don't respect you, and I'm just going to roll my eyes at everything you say, because I find it so stupid. Mocking your partner and being sarcastic, and not in a playful way, are also signs of contempt. Contempt can be the result of resentment that went unchecked for way too long. And I always say resentment is poison for a relationship. Once it creeps in, it festers, and soon enough you can't find any positive qualities about your partner anymore. If you can't respect him, you need to ask yourself why. 
Do you think he's just an idiot? If so, why are you with him? Or are you just trying to protect yourself and self-sabotaging? Or are you angry over things that happened with him in the past that you never addressed? Number 5. Being too sensitive and insecure. I'm not saying never get upset when your partner says or does something hurtful, but it's important to step back sometimes and look at where that hurt is coming from. We all have sore spots, we all have old wounds that never fully healed and sometimes someone can say something innocent, but it just presses on that raw space and we have an extreme reaction. A lot of the time, those are our insecurities. It's how we already feel about ourselves, but we blame our partner for making us feel a certain way. For example, if you go to cut yourself a second piece of cake and he asks, are you sure you want that? And you get hysterical and think he's calling you fat. I chose that as an example because that happened to me a long time ago with a boyfriend. The fact is, I felt insecure in the relationship. And like most girls, I was chronically insecure about my body, so when he made that comment, my mind immediately went to he thinks I'm fat and he's not attracted to me. Number 4. Setting him up to fail. Don't expect him to read your mind and know what you want and how you want it. If you want a happy relationship, set your partner up to win. Just be direct, don't drop hints, and then get angry when he doesn't pick up on them. If you want him to plan something special for your anniversary, just tell him that. Yes, I know it would be more romantic if he could just intuit exactly what it is you want, but he can't. So just tell him instead of getting upset on the day of. Number 3. Expecting your partner to fill a void. Another person cannot repair what's broken inside you. It might feel like you'll be all whole and healed from your past trauma once you find someone who loves you enough. But there is no such thing as enough when you have that void because it can never be filled by someone else. Love won't heal you and it won't erase your past pains and trauma. Conversely, love will bring up all that is unloved within you. Whatever it is you haven't dealt with will keep coming up again and again. Number 2. Having an Agenda This is a mistake that usually kills a budding relationship, but can also harm an established one. Having an agenda means you want to push the relationship in a certain direction to feel good about yourself. If you're in the early phases of dating, you may feel this overwhelming need to become official, and you measure all of your interactions in terms of whether they're taking you closer to or further from that goal. It's not just about wanting a relationship, because you like this other person and want to create a meaningful partnership. It's about what it will mean to you and about you. You attach a certain meaning to having this thing. It will mean you're worthy, you're okay, you won't end up alone, etc. Number 1. Avoiding Confrontation Happy couples aren't couples who never fight, they just don't fight dirty. Arguments can be healthy and are a chance to grow as a couple, but only if you use them to resolve. If you're having problems, nothing will change if you ignore it. Rather, you'll end up becoming bitter and resentful, and this will poison your relationship. Avoiding confrontation can also cause you to act passive-aggressive, and this never takes things in a positive direction. So this is the end of our today's video. Do you like it? Kindly give your valuable response in our comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more interesting and informative videos.